Today I am going to be demonstrating this secretary bird using ink tents. I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Yeah, this isn't done yet. I'll finish it tomorrow. It'll be done by the end of this video, though. For this, I'm using the Derwent Ink Tense blocks and the pencils. I do have a, my original review. If you've not seen it, I show you how I mix water in with the blocks. I'll we'll have a card puppet up here, so definitely check that out. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the two-hour version of this video is available for you guys now, so make sure to head over and check that out. Now, onto this tutorial. For this one, I did not use masking fluid like you'll often see me do for my subjects when I paint my background with ink tents. Because of the way that I blended this, it would have been more work than just painting around my subject. I'm using an olive green color and I'm getting various shades based on how much water I use. If I use more water, that light, that color is going to be a lot lighter. Less water, it's going to be darker. And I'm going to do this in a few layers because ink tints, a lot of people confuse it with watercolor. It is not watercolor, it's actually water soluble ink, which means when it dries, it is permanent. So I can put layer on top of layer without creating mud. So that was my first layer, I let that dry. Going back over that to darken some of it up. After I get this on there, I'm going to let it dry. And for this next layer, I'm going to start adding more browns and blacks into the dark area. You can see I'm using a mop brush to brush out some of my brush strokes so that it's a lot smoother. Now on to the eye. I'm using a very small brush. This is a Taclon bristled, just a small brush. I don't even know what the tip on this one is. And I'm going through and getting all of my little detail. You can see that I will often start with my darks, my black first when I work in ink tents, and then lay the color on top of it. Again, because this is permanent, I can do that. It's not going to smear or smudge. My reference photo from this guy comes from wildlifereferencephotos.com. So if you want to paint this or draw it yourself, you can pick that up over there. You can see I'm blocking in a lot of my darks first. Using a liner brush here for some of the smaller detail. This is a synthetic hog haired liner brush. The nice thing with the ink tents, a lot of people I've seen complain that they're too bright or that they're not bright enough. It's just an issue of how much water you add. If you want it brighter, use less water. If you want it to be a softer color, like here where I'm mixing that gray color, that's just my black with a lot of water mixed in. So you really do have a lot of flexibility with this medium. So I'm coming back through with the pencil now. Before I was working just with the blocks and mixing a mixture with the paintbrush and water, now I'm adding my shading and all the detail with the actual pencils. Now you have to be careful when you add the pencils, if you're gonna go over that with water, they get super dark. So just be aware of that. I strongly recommend have a scratch piece of paper next to you and test out what that's going to look like. Cause you can have some pretty unhappy surprises if you're not careful. Cause it'll seem like the pencil is not that dark, not that much color came on and you put the water on it and oh my gosh, it goes bright. Now for this guy, I'm going a lot brighter and using a lot more colors than what are on my reference photo. After getting a bit more detail in here, I'm going to come through with a flat Taclon bristled brush. I'm going to start getting my fine detailed lines. I've slowed the video down a little bit so you can see how I'm holding that brush to get these sketchy lines for the feathers. Now, not all birds are going to have their feathers have this sort of detail. The way that these are shaded means that this bird is kind of fluffed up. So definitely watch that. Don't think that this is always how you're going to do feathers. You just want to watch your reference photo. And see how I'm getting those nice sketchy lines with that brush. And it's a bigger brush. I could do all of that with a liner, but it would take a lot longer. I can get a lot more coverage here, but still have those thin sketchy lines with this smaller flat brush. And it's just a matter of how I hold it. If I turn it to the side, I can get thicker lines. When I hold it to the other side or to the edge, I can get these nice thin skinny lines. So speeding this back up, I'm gonna continue to go through here, sketching this out. Now I like to break up the areas that I'm working on one section at a time. So I started with his eye and moved out to his beak and the skin around between his eye and his beak, and then moved on to his forehead. The top of his head is what I'm really focusing on here. Once I get that done, I'm gonna move on to the next section, but I break it up from section to section. Now I glazed that 
darker color so I can come on with white. So you can see how I'm using the paintbrush with water right on that ink tense block to make my mixture. I'm making it pretty thick and I'm going to go over this to get some of my details with the white. Now that I have the darker color behind it, the white's really going to show up well. Now the thing with the white is it'll look like not much is happening until it dries. It dries very opaque, but when you're first applying it, it'll feel like you don't have enough on there. Just trust that it is going to show up later. You can go back and add more if you need to later on, but don't feel like nothing's happening right off the bat. It does look very translucent when you're applying it. So you can see how much of that white showed up. And now I'm coming back through with a pencil to do additional shading in between some of those feathers. So on to these feathers on the back of the head, just blocking in a base color. And these larger long feathers are going to end up mostly black, but I do want other color in there with them. So I'm adding that other color first and I'll let some of that peek through the black. So I used the pencil to apply the black there. And then when I went on top of it with the paintbrush, you could see it got really, really dark. I'm watching the direction of the little lines in all of these feathers. Doing the little details here with a liner brush. Now normally you'll hear me say that when I paint, I prefer brushes that have longer bristles on them. With ink tints, you can get away with some of the, the brushes that have short, short bristles and get great results. Just because this paint is so thin, it actually does work well with some of those short bristled brushes. So if you've put some of those aside realizing they didn't work for your acrylics, pull them back out because you may like them for this medium. I'm just loosely blocking everything in here. I don't have to worry about all the details being perfect. I can come back through and adjust anything I need to later on. It's a very forgiving medium. As I block these in, again, I am making sure that all my little brush strokes are going with the direction of that feather, all the little lines that need to be in there. Now, one of the things that I found with the ink tents that I really like, the white pencil, it's very light. It doesn't come out super dark, but here where I can come through and almost use it to sort of blend, I can go along the edges of these feathers and it lightens it up. I get the lines in there, but it's not super bright. If I were to do that with the white ink tents block, it would be way too much. But with that white pencil, it's very faint, just enough to get that subtle transition from the lighter colors at the tips of the fe feathers to the darker colors. So here I'm using the black ink tense block just like I did with the white where I mix it direct water directly onto the, the block and then use the paintbrush. I'm going around and sketching out all of my feathers for the rest of the body. Making sure that all these little lines go along with the feathers. I don't just want smooth outlines for those feathers. They have to have that sketchy line to look right because he is all fluffed up. And this part goes pretty quickly. Constantly looking at my reference photo. My biggest tip for you on any piece is just keep looking at that reference photo. You'll get to the point where you're like, I've got this. I know how to draw feathers. You probably don't. We probably need to keep looking at that reference photo in order to get them to look right. And I'm not worried that each feather is exactly the same as the reference photo. That's not a concern of mine. I need them to be about the right size, in about the right location, going the right direction, that sort of thing. I don't care if they're in the exact same position as it is on my reference photo. To me, that would just take more time and not really make the work any better as long as I'm close but I do need to be close. So I do want to keep looking at that reference photo. 
Now I came through a lot of this with this blue pencil and this is one of those cases where when I added water it was like oh my gosh that is too much blue. So I had to let it dry and then come back over it with the white ink tense block to cover a lot of that blue. It was definitely more blue than I had wanted. I also ended up coming back through. Once I covered a lot of this up with the block I realized I do like some of this blue so I pulled it around the top of the bird's head so that it wasn't just kind of purpley colors on top and then you've got the blue green colors on the bottom. I have to balance all of that out. It's okay to have the higher color saturation, but I do need to have that balanced. And I did cover a lot of that with a white ink tense block. And you can see as that white ink tense block is starting to dry, how those feathers start to lighten up a lot. And it leaves that blue just a little bit in the background. But that blue definitely came out stronger than I was expecting. So like I said, be aware of that. When you add water, when you've added the pencil, it can be a lot darker than you were expecting. Now you will always see me add the, or work with the ink tense blocks first. I never add the ink tense block directly to the paper. Well, I shouldn't say never, there's a few exceptions to that, but most of the time I will not add ink tense blocks directly to the paper because, and then add water on top of that because it ends up giving you this very gritty, grainy look. The same thing with the pencils. I always get a base layer that I've painted on with a paintbrush, mix my mixture with water, from the block and then paint that on for my base layers. Then I can go on top with my pencils and it won't look so grainy or gritty, but I can get a lot of the nice detail with those pencils after. But I've always got that base layer first that I've painted on directly with a paintbrush. You can see as I'm working, I'm just layering and layering and layering. That's one of my favorite things about this medium is that you can just keep layering. You have a bad layer, no big deal, paint over it. That white really does cover up well. You can paint something white and then put whatever color you wanted on top of it. So it's almost like bringing the paper back to its original color. You can see I'm using a lot of little details with that liner brush and it doesn't look like much is happening, but as it dries, all of these little details start to pop out. You can see I'm really darkening up my values for the shadows in between a lot of these feathers too. Not all of them, because that would start to look really weird. Just some of the darkest ones. A few more of those little white lines. Again, if I were to use the white pencil, it wouldn't show up. That really wouldn't give me the look I was wanting. That white pencil isn't opaque enough. The white intense block is though. Few more touch-ups here and there. This is the stage where I put my reference photo away and just decide what my piece needs to be better. Do I need more contrast in any given area? Do I need to soften something out? I just step away and figure out what my piece needs to make it the best I can possibly make it. And that is it for this guy. And again, if you've not seen it already, make sure to check out my initial review of the Derwent Ink Tents where I go over a little bit more of the pros and the cons and how to blend them with water and a paintbrush. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the two hour version of this tutorial is available for you now, so make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs, which are sometimes just art Q&As, every Saturday. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Do you ever have one of those days where your hair is singing that Rage Against the Machine song with lyrics I'm not going to repeat on this channel? Those of you who know Rage Against the Machine know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what my hair was singing to me today. It keeps getting in my eyes too. See, I'm headed to the zoo after I record this video, so I thought I need to keep my hair out of my face because I'm going to be taking photos. Normally I would just throw it in a ponytail, but I had to record videos first so I didn't want to do that and I ended up with this halfway, I don't know what's going on, but it's getting annoying. It may end up in a ponytail anyway. Now I have that Rage Against the Machine song stuck in my head. I'm working on 300 pound Fabriano Artistico Extra White. You know what, I'm just gonna link all that below in the video description because that is really long to say.